Hello friends, welcome to another episode of Magnum Videos. Today we're going to do a little outside tour of the yard and let me show you what we've done so far. So stick around. I know that most of the videos I've shown you of the new house have been of the interior. And those that I've shown you of the exterior have been primarily focused on the lawn and the grass and the processes, the chemicals, the procedures of having a nice lawn. But we're going to change that up today because I'm going to do a little tour uh, of the outside and show you some of the things that we've done besides the lawn. Now, when you move to a new home, you obviously take things with you that you love, that you cherish, uh, that you're familiar with, but you also have to buy some new things too. And that's especially true on the exterior of the house because you can't take trees, you can't take bushes, you can't take flowers from your previous home. So we had to do a little bit of that, although we did bring some of the things with us uh, from the other house. So we're going to do a, a little short tour here. We haven't done a great deal so far. Uh, we've only had five months. We moved in in December and uh, two or three of those months were winter time. And uh, but since spring sprung, we've been able to do a little bit. And uh, there's a lot more that we have to do and I'll keep you up to date on that as well. But for now, let's take a little tour of what we've done so far. All right, welcome to the tour. It seemed only fitting that we begin this tour in the same location where our introduction ended. And that location is what we refer to as the resident rock formation. And it's called that because the rocks that you see here were resident to this property long before we were. In fact, Roger, our excavator, dug them up and pulled them out of the ground from a location about the level of where our basement floor is now. So I asked him to just set them on the vacant lot next door and I would put them where they needed to go after the sod was in. Since then, Rosie has added some of her hens and chickens, which she brought from the other house, because she says they will grow in a thimble full of dirt and they'll be just fine there. So that's what we're doing. And I think they look pretty good. If we head straight south from the resident rock formation, we come to a tree where Miss Rosie wanted to put some hostas. So I removed the sod from around one of the trees, which makes it a lot easier to mow around, by the way, and planted them, and then put some mulch in. And that is cedar mulch. And in case you didn't know, cedar is very unattractive to fleas, ticks, termites, moths, mosquitoes, and other non-desirable insects. So it's a win-win situation. If you take a right at the hosta bed and head due west for about 30 feet or so, you'll run into another tree. And leaning against that tree and attached to it with a piece of jute is Miss Rosie's trellis. She had this at the other house and grew her clematis on it every year. But since we moved here, she didn't want to put a clematis on it. She decided she wanted to put some tomatoes and some cucumbers so that we could have fresh vegetables for salad. And that's exactly what we did. We haven't got the cucumbers planted yet, but that's coming up this week. If you go up on the deck and look to the north, you'll see Miss Rosie's hanging basket. Now she brought this from the other house, but she didn't bring the geraniums. Those are new. She just found those, fell in love with them, and decided that that's what she wanted. The area you're seeing here is a correction of a previous problem. When we first moved in, the 26th of December, uh, Hannah decided to use that specific area for her bathroom facilities. Now at that time it was sod 
and it was right at the bottom of the deck steps. So it was convenient, she didn't have to stay out any longer than necessary and could scurry right back in when she finished. Over the winter, uh, that area froze and thawed and froze and thawed and the sod died, obviously, in an area uh, right in the center of that, about three foot long and a foot wide. It became a sponge in the spring. Uh, it was just holding water, soaking up water, and uh, the reason it was soaking up water was because the sod was laid right on top of a huge uh, glob of gray, hard, heavy clay. So when I decided to fix that, I was going to resod it, but when I pulled the sod up and it dripped water and below the sod was just a puddle of water and a big gray glob of clay, I decided that sod's not going to work here. So I uh, took a shovel, cut into it, and when I cut into the clay and separated it, the water just kind of drained down. So I figured I need to get the clay out of there. So I started shoveling. I took about three, sh uh, I think it's uh, Home Depot shovels or uh, buckets of clay over to the vacant lot next door and dumped it and got down to something that was a little bit more decent and a little bit more porous. I dug out enough that I could get about a half a bucket of uh, gravel in there and I put a little bit of sand in with it and then I was trying to figure out what to do. We were going to do pavers there to put the barbecue on, but that was going to be about 250 bucks. I didn't want to spend that. So Rosie found some uh, Mexican beach pebbles that she liked real well. So I bought seven bags of those at $11 a bag. And the big rocks that you see in there are just basically space holders so that I could save a couple of bags of rocks. So anyway, that's the situation there. And um, I think it's going to work out good. The barbecue will fit nicely right in there and it's all uh, impervious to fire. So there's no problem there. This is a shot of our hummingbird feeders that we brought from our previous house. Miss Rosie mixes up the nectar for the hummingbirds about every three or four days so it's always fresh. And we do get the occasional visitor. Actually, we get several visitors during the day and they always come in and give a nice long drink, especially when it's 90 degrees out there. And there you have it. That's where we are at this point. Uh, as I said, we haven't done a great deal and there is quite a bit left to do before fall. And uh, I will keep you up to date on uh, what we're doing and what we've done and show you the results. So I think that's it for now. I appreciate you watching. I hope you'll subscribe. Uh, click that little uh, icon, the little bell icon, so you'll get notified when I upload a new video and you don't miss anything. And until I speak with you again and even after that, you stay focused.